The Electoral Commission is to begin processes for a referendum in the northern, western Bonohafo and the Volta regions on the proposed creation of new on the proposed creation of new regions. The referendum will determine whether or not Ghana will will have a northern region, a savannah north. Oti from the Volta region, Bono East from the Bono Hafu region, and Western North from the Western region. Now, the Presidential Commission on the Creation of the New Regions recommended that man marginalization, extreme poverty, and low level development, as they observed during their tour, is enough for a strong case for the proponents for these new creations to be created. So how and where will the referendum expected, is this referendum expected to happen? Chairman of the Presidential Commission, retired Supreme Court Judge, Justice Stephen Brobe says all interest groups this show satisfaction with the Commission's recommendations. We'll go live to the Ministry of Regional Reorganization and Development where Kojo Yangsen is having a conversation with the Minister in charge who is Daniel, uh, Dan Butri. Thank you, Gifty, and you're very welcome to the Ministry of Regional Reorganization and Development. We're here with the Minister, Mr. Dan Butchie. Uh, he's had a rather busy morning as the report of the Presidential Commission that was set up uh, by the mandate of the Constitution to look into uh, various matters surrounding the government's plans to reorganize some of the regions of Ghana. Uh, finally, uh, presented their report to the president uh, this morning. Uh, Mr. Boche, thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you. Indeed, this is a, a watershed moment in the process that you have been mandated to carry out. Yeah. Now we know what the commission um, has found. But let's start from the beginning. What was the commission asked specifically to do by the president and indeed the constitution? Well, thank you. The Chapter 2 of the Constitution talks about territories of Ghana. And it has two articles, Article 4 and Article 5. Article 5 sets out to explain that if at any time a group of people, citizens, want an alteration of the boundaries of existing regions, creation of new regions out of existing regions, or the measure of two or more regions, the processes are set out in Article 5, how they should go about it. 5.2 talks about when petitions are presented to Mr. President. He has to consult, seek advice from the Council of State, and then we'll go on to set up a commission of inquiry. Africa 5.3, that the President, on his own, even if he doesn't receive any petition, can actually go ahead, seek advice from Council of State, and set up the commission. In both cases, a commission of inquiry will have to be set to as it were go into the matter to find out whether there's a need and a substantial demand. Those are the words of the Constitution, Article 5.4. The need of substantial demand for the creation of the regions in this case. And then, so that way, Mr. President, I mean, the mandate of the Commission of Inquiry came from the Constitution. And that's exactly what Mr. President said. That's Article uh, CI. He had to set up a constitutional instrument, CI 105. So that was their mandate to inquire into the, uh, the petitions that have been received and see whether there's a need and substantial demand for that. And then the boundaries that will have to be made in order to get the new regions. And then at the constituency demands, it's a, it's, it will be the duty of the Commission of Inquiry to specify the issues that they will have to hold the referendum on and the places where the referendum will take place. So that was exactly what was lifted from the Constitution and given to them as their mandate. So it is the Commission that decides the issues upon which the referendum will be held exactly. and the locales, if you will, the exactly. places. The Commission exactly. decides that. The Commission that. decides the Constitution that. Constitution Article 5.4. Right. And if these decisions are made and there are objections or there, are, there is a public reaction to it, can any of these decisions be appealed or amended? And who has the power to do so? I, I'm not so sure what you mean by objections so or for example, uh, if, uh, the, uh, amendments. The, if the issues that. on which the referendum are to be held, yeah. if the commission identifies two issues, yeah. and the people of the area feel that there must be three issues, yeah. they want to add one, 
Mm -hmm. Is there scope for that? Too? Well, I think it will go by the constitution. Of course, in, in governance, Mr. President, if there's something that's so strong that needs a review, why not? I mean, we will have to consult uh, very widely to make such a decision. So the president has the power, ultimately? To... Well, I think the power and maybe the duty, because why not? I mean, if a commissioner made a recommendation and we think that there's a huge public outcry and there's a need to sit with them to see the best way out of the situation. Why not? It will be done. For me, I see it as a normal uh, course of things if that becomes necessary. But in this case, it's, it's, it's their constitutional duty. You're talking about having a referendum. A question has to be put. And they are saying that what are the issues you put a question? Yeah. Incidentally, I, I happen to uh, know that in this case, it's a yes or no. Because normally in referendum, I mean, do you want a region created or not? Yes or no? So at that time, I don't think there will be uh, so some, the some, some disagreement on that. That is the recommendation? Of that the is the recommendation. So it will be a simple, do you want a new region, a new region created? created? Yes or, or no? no. Yeah. And who will be answering this question? Again, that one too is supposed to be uh, answered by the, uh, the commission. The people who are supposed to answer that question. And then the people in that only, it will be a contentious issue. Mm -hmm. The people only in the, uh, those who petitioned. Or is it a matter of a whole region going to uh, take part in the decision? Mm -hmm. The commission is supposed to specify the issues and places where the referendum plays. That's the, these are the words of the con uh, 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 constitution. Mm -hmm. The issues on which the referendum will be held and the places where. Mm -hmm. So you and, told us what the issue will be, what the yeah. question will be. Yeah. Um, in, what did this commission decide uh, this comi regarding the places? The places, um, they, they've, they've listed where uh, the referendum should take place. Yes. Okay. And will it be just the areas that petitioned, or will it be the entire region that is affected that will end up being split up? That has not been um, um, looked at by me as of now, but I know, I've been told, that they have listed their places. I'm sure when I finally digest the report, we, we, can, we can speak on that, because it's, it's not going to be a secret. It has to be referred to the Electoral Commission anyway, mm. <laughs> for them to work on, because they are hold, going to hold the referendum, and they should know where they are going to, where, and they prepare for it. Yes, you, uh, you know the report of President only last night. And, but uh, you're saying as the implementing minister, you don't yet know? Well, in four regions, and in each of these areas, they will have to list the places, so you cannot immediately mention all. But it's something I'm sure in the f next few days when we fully digest, we can, we can talk about that. All right, now your ministry is the implementing ministry. No. And there's going to be quite a bit of implementing to do once this kicks <laughs> off. Um, so for example, in, um, in the Bronga Hafu region, I mm -hmm. made to understand there will now be three yes. regions made yes. up of the one. Yes. Let's talk about the uh, practicality of yeah. implementing. There is one region at the moment. There yes. will now be three. Yes. Now, in terms of the resource allocation, currently, whatever resources are allocated to the Brong Ahafo region, once that becomes three separate regions, yeah. will those resources now be split between the three regions or? Will you have to find, for example, if, there, if it's $10 million, for example, a year, that goes to Bronga Hapu region, will you have to find $10 million new dollars for each of the two newly created regions? In the normal course of running of government, I mean, each region gets an allocation. So it's not going to be that there's allocation for Bronga Hapu, and therefore we are going to divide into three. I don't think so. Each region, based on its needs, will have its allocation. Because it's a, it's a, you are not now going to look at Ahafo or Bono region or Bono East as coming out of, um, what do you call it, uh, Brown Ahafo region. If they go through this whole process successfully, they get the, the voter turnout, the 50%, they get 80% saying yes, and they become a region. They are not a region on their own. But now, why are we talking about Western Center? We don't say that, oh, Western region that came out of Gold Coast Crown Colony. Nobody says that. Because in 1902, we had only three administrative regions. Mm -hmm. So all these kind of 10 regions that we have came out from other regions. And we don't make reference to that. So they become regions of their own. Mm -hmm. And they be treated as such. I mean, that 
um, local governance act at 936. It, there's a whole session on regional administration, mm -hmm. part eight of I think the local government, uh, uh, governance act. It talks about the share they get from the district assembly common fund. Mm -hmm. Some go to the regional coordinating councils. A percentage goes to the regional coordinating council. So each of these regions will get their share from the allocation of the district assembly common fund. So in theory, we have 10 regions. Yes. We're going to add six more if this referendum Exactly. Is, um, as, exactly. As, um, the petitioners hope. So in theory, yeah. we could end up requiring an extra 60% of regional resource allocation in order to cover 16 regions. I don't know if... if that, that's how you, can, you, you want to put it. But the most important, how, the, how I see is that within the port of allocations, 16 regions will share. Right. So then I may not call it extra, but I will say that <laughs> with this report, mm. 16 regions will share. As I, was, I tried to say, right. whatever resources Ghana had, mm. or Gold Coast had at that time, 1902, we had three administrative regions, mm. and they shared it. By independence 1957, we had five administrative regions. Mm. They shared. As of now, we have 10. Mm. So from independence to 19, gradually to 1983, mm. when the last region Upper West was created, we share. So whatever is added now in the source 16, the resources of Ghana, we are so we are not we have not added any extra <laughs> uh, land from any outside Ghana to, uh, to it. It's still Ghana. So we share. That's an interesting point. If we carry that theory forward, and let's stick with our Bronga Hapu region scenario, yeah. where there was well, there there was one, there will now be three yes. things go mm. to plan. If that region is allocated normally $10 million. Mm. We are now splitting that $10 million among the three. Yeah. So in reality, what is changing? What is it that these three administrative units yeah. will be able to achieve yeah. with the same resources that one administrative unit could not achieve for the same geographical area? I'm not exactly saying that. Again, the theory is hoping that they were getting maybe 10 cities, and therefore they are still going to share the 10 cities. No, that's not what I'm saying. Oh, that was the theory. No, what I'm, no, no, I'm saying that we're going to share what is in the port for the whole nation. Right. By the time you are aware, we may say that, oh, having created these new regions, we believe that uh, maybe 15% should go to this new area. Over and above, even what was happening there, because it is the, based on the needs of the time, as it's assessed by central government. So that will also determine that. Again, again, in the local governance acts that talk about decentralisation, there are certain functions of the regional coordinating council: the planning functions, the supervisory functions, the monitoring functions of the uh, regional coordinating council. Now you're going to have three different regional coordinating councils who are get, going to get closer to the people. There's going to be improved efficiency in running of government business. So instead of what administration overseeing the allocation of one resource that came to one region, three different administrations are going to see to it for efficient and effective use of these resources. So that's the thing that will change. And there will be improved service delivery, better uh, planning, and better, more efficient coordination of the activities, and therefore government resources. But also increased cost of governance, if you will. And suddenly, I mean, if Joy FM decides to create more departments to improve of, of on the efficiency, it means more people will be employed because, and why not? I mean, there's not a lot of increased cost. Is, is there, what were the I mean, benefit? which we just said that there's going to be increased, uh, 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 there's going to be better supervision, better planning, and uh, monitoring, which will come better outcomes. And you have to weigh that against the cost. Let's talk about the options available to you as, as the implementing. Um, uh, ministry. Once this kicks off, there will be a referendum. Yes. The referendum will be asking people in a particular area whether they want their region split yeah. or not. I know you say you haven't read it, mm -hmm. but as a person who comes from a region that might be 
affected. Yeah. I'm obviously interested sure. in how it will pan out. So tell us what you can. Will you be asking the people in the areas that petitioned mm -hmm. to answer the question? Or will you be asking everyone in the region to answer the question? What I've been made to believe is that it's most likely the people who in the area who petitioned, they are going to answer the question. And from what the, uh, 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 as I discussed with the members of the commission after they are presented their report, they say, yeah, there are precedents for that. In May 1949, <clears throat> uh, there was a plebiscite in, in Gold Coast. That was before the 1953 plebiscite of Tal Vota to Holland. The people of Katie Kratcher and their, I mean, Kef and Ken were living in the northern section of Transvota Togoland. They petitioned the colonial government that no, they want to be uh, with their uh, brethren in the southern Seven section country. of the Transvota Togoland. The petition was accepted and there was a referendum in May 1949 by those who petitioned. It was not said that all the people in the northern section of Transvota Togoland should vote. So, it happened, May 1949. Then there was the 1956 plebiscite. Not all the people in present day not vote region voted, no. Neither did the rest of Ghanaians ask to vote that you agree that somebody should be added to you or not. That was not done. The areas who have been added, and I have the, the results of that plebiscite here they were asked to vote. So that's been the thinking, that the people who have asked for the thing, because it's always championed by some leaders. Our revere chiefs, opinion leaders, youth groups, put come together and put a call. So people want, they, they want to know that, is it the case that what they're asking for is the true refreshing of the wishes, the thinking, of the generality of the broad mass of the people they are leading? You understand? And therefore, that's why they all had to come and vote. And you see, that there's a quite a high threshold. So that is it. Yes. So they talk about um, other instances, East Timor, independence of uh, um, Sudan, Southern Sudan. <laughs> the people who wanted to leave were those who voted. They didn't ask the whole uh, Sudan to vote. In, La in, in Britain, Scot Scotland, well, they wanted to. Uh, 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 have their destiny, they alone yeah. voted. Yeah. They all did not take part in the, in the voting. And there are maybe other states in Canada, Quebec, not the whole uh, country votes. Those who want to leave vote. And at times they fail to get what is the required vote. So, this is uh, what they tell me. I've been found with their considerations. That made them think that those people are those who are supposed to vote. There are some who argue that perhaps there is a rather clear difference between what is sought to be achieved now mm -hmm. and what happened in the past. For example, in the Ketakrachi situation, mm -hmm. um, it was a group of people who wanted to be identified with the southern part of the trans water, um, rather than the northern part. Mm -hmm. So in essence, it was the redrawing of a, a border to include one area. In this case, you are taking an already defined border and you are splitting it into two, or in some cases, three. I'm afraid that border was also defined because there was a whole crazy. If I show you the map, there was a northern session and there was a border. Yes. There's a border between the northern session and the southern session, yes. clearly defined. Yes. They were moving completely from the northern session mm -hmm. to the southern session. Mm -hmm. But it was important in that there were other people with them in that enclave of the northern session. They were not part of that decision making. That, that's the point I'm trying to make. And, and where fair? they, well, one wonders who defines what is fair and not fair in that case. I don't well, think there was, case, there, there, was the there was a, there was a, no. I mean, you were asking what was happening. Yes, Forty-nine yes. was fair, yes. and I said, well, the reports that we all read, nothing shows or seems to suggest that maybe there was an uproar, there was a petition, people were against that as not mm. fair. And other places that we can make reference to outside Ghana, mm. we've, that have been practiced. Nobody has heard of any contrary to say that it's not fair. Maybe because those other people were never asked? 
we don't need to be asked to express your opinion that it's fair or not. We don't need to. So in That's this case, I think, yeah. um, this is the feeling of the commission that yes, um, yes. The, the other people in the region mm -hmm. who have not petitioned yes. the region to be split, mm -hmm. um, they don't care how this goes? That's, they, I, I, well, I'm not sure the weather's care. The issue is that those who want this new region is what have been put forth as the petition on their behalf. Do they agree to it? For me, that is the issue. Because if you are standing the issue of care, well, if I'm in this region, I should care what happens in the voter region. I should care what happens in Brahma. So it cannot be the issue of just care. It's the reason that a petition has been made on our behalf. Do we agree to it or not? For me, that's how I look at it. Do we have timelines for the referendum and what is, what is to come after it? Well, certainly. You, you don't timeline as a constitutional timeline. But, you know, we should have a roadmap. When the ministry was set up, we set a lot of consultations. Because we thought it's a new thing, like the President said. It's a whole new area. <laughs> we have not been, we ever used this constitution to chart this course. And so we have to read a lot about what has happened before, the history of the country, uh, the regional creation. We have to rely heavily on the regional House of Chiefs and other institutions for guidance and advice. So there certainly was a roadmap. We kept the Electoral Commission in view all the time because we knew that there should be a time where there will be a referendum. For example, last year we wrote to the Commission to at least alert them there was a need to have a provision made in their budget for 2018 that the possibility of having a referendum. And that was done. Then, as Mr. President gave them commission um, six months, by the end of getting the end of April, it became clear that they need extra time. We also informed the commission that, well, the commission of crime may now present their report ending uh, June. And therefore, if they recommend that there should be a referendum, they should also get prepared. They will also come out with the things they will need to make sure that. So they also have a roadmap. But we had meetings with them in this office about three weeks ago about the possibility of, I mean, their roadmap, what they will need, uh, upgrade of their machines, opening of the voters register, exhibition, and all that. Yeah. But of course, they had to wait for this report to know where the, um, um, uh, the places where the reform is going to be held. That will let them have an idea of the real budget that we need. But we've been in touch with them. There's correspondence that confirmed that uh, uh, we have a meeting and they have been planning. Leadership All being well, we, we expect that by the end of the year, this referendum should take place. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the leadership of the Electoral Commission themselves have their own uh, issues ongoing, uh, a petition against a few of them. Mm -hmm. Is there any indication that that might affect these processes? From our interaction with them, uh, uh, we think they are still working and at least we can speak to what we know. They respond to us, we meet them in their offices, and like I said, I wrote to the chairman of the commission, Mrs. Charlotte say. Then the deputy chair, uh, uh, Alagis uh, uh, Sule, calls that, oh, he has a letter from an affid military team from the chairperson, which meant that they, are, they were working. And that <clears throat> they also have their internal meeting, and then when they are ready, they will come and have a meeting with us. And the following week, he was here with a whole technical team, that of IT, that of elections, that of human resources, a whole team from the Electoral Commission were here. And we had a meeting, the little route to confirm some of the things that we had discussed. So in our view, uh, they are working. They are, they, are, they are working at least towards the regional reorganization. We can testify to that. Let's talk about the names that have been recommended by the Commission uh, yeah. for the newly created region. So we're going to have Oti, yes. Ahafo, Brong East, Western North, mm. North East, and Savannah. Yes. Now I know there's been some concern from uh, some MPs in the Bota region about the names, particularly for the split of the Bota region, the proposed splits of the Bota region, where they are uh, wondering whether we can't go with Northern Bota and Southern Bota. Voter North, Voter South, rather than uh, what is being proposed? Well, uh, let me say that it's not the Commission who proposed the names. You see, the petitions came from, as I've repeated, the chiefs and the elders, the opinion leaders, and the youth groups from these areas. And the petitions that came had these names, proposed names. As to whether at the end of the day, when they fully go through the whole process, and the, the region is about to be created and formally named. It will be the same name 
that's a different issue. But these were the names that they themselves suggested. When they, they created their own letterheads and they formed an uh, organization, so the Council, Council of uh, uh, Ahafu Chiefs, Coalition of Bono East Chiefs and Leaders. Mm -hmm. You understand him? So it came out there. The Joint Consultative Council of Oti, proposed Oti region. So it came from them. It's, it's not the commission or government who gave them the names. But yeah. ultimately, it is the government that will decide which names we go forward with. I'm guessing your ministry will do that. No, that Mr. President, and I'm sure these are things that you always have to do in consultation with the people. I mean, our revered chiefs are the landowners. If you are only speaking to the petitioners, then they are the ones who will tell you what names they want. So ultimately, we'll end up with these names, won't we? If that's what they want, I, I, I'll be surprised whether government will have any problem with that. I'll so be there, surprised. Will, there will actually not be any room to consider uh, these uh, MPs uh, concerned. I, I'm not aware. I know that the, the, we met the MPs as a ministry, even before the commission was appointed. We met the members of parliament to brief them, to draw their attention to <clears throat> the constitutional provisions and our roadmap. We, we, we met them. Then the commission also met all honorable members of parliament from the, these four regions. Right. They made them. Again, the members of parliament were part of the delegation of chiefs. The commission met the people, the petitioners, three times. First, they invited all of them. As soon as the commission was formed, they invited all of them to Accra. And they might have all seen on television, they came one by one for them to explain their petition, have discussion with them and all that, and agree on the roadmap and when they visit their region. So they all came. And in all these meetings, the members of parliament were part of it. Then they visited the, um, the regions. And if I did the same leadership who helped them draw some of the places they should go to interact with the people. That were public hearings. So all these were recorded and captured. Their MPs were also there. Then finally, the community said, well, there might be some people who, for one reason or the other, because the first meeting at the castle were, was in, in camera to get the chiefs to be able to express themselves. There was a public hearing in the regions when they visited them. They organized another public hearing in Accra as a third and final day, where if for some reason there were citizens in Accra who could not, capital who could not attend uh, from the commission's work in the regions, they could have the opportunity to talk. That one too, I saw the MPs there, they took part. Yes. And so did they raise this? I, I wasn't part of the meeting because I don't sit in the meeting. But we created a thing, we welcome them, then we, I leave. Yes, but I, I just want to say that I saw members of parliament in these four regions, in all these three engagements of the commission, I saw them. So at what point will the president finally make a decision about what means? Once the referendum is done, let's assume... Uh, oh, yes, uh, yeah. people say that um, the baby has to be born before you, you, you give the name. Even though others say that, somebody said, that, well, maybe before my baby was... <laughs> was my, I knew the name I was going to give. That. So <laughs> you, 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 you can't get it always... Uh, um, the same way as all people will see it. But the, I think that will have to be the thing. When the whole thing is finished, there'll be consultation, certainly. Because we're consulting them all this well. You've gone through the process now. You can now qualify by the constitution. Uh, there should be the CI to make sure these regions are created. Finally, what do we have to do? I know the issue of Qatar will come up. <laughs> of course.